Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, senior leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. Our headquarters are in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Come have church, prayer rooms, prophecy rooms, healing rooms. We are here for you. You can send in your prayer requests to prayer at awakeninghouseofprayer.com. I know so many of you need prayer at a time like this. Today's broadcast sponsored by our Ignite E-Prophetic Summit. That's going to be in just a few weeks. It's free. Go sign up for that at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. You can watch right there from the comfort of your own home. I'll be teaching on the prophetic, sharing, praying. It's going to be good. God bless you today. Our devotion from Victory Decrees, Daily Prophetic Strategies for Spiritual Warfare Victory, is entitled, Don't Let Frustration Take You Off Track. Don't Let Frustration take you off track. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Stop allowing the enemy to disrupt your flow. Ah, We could stop right there. Let me say that just one more time for the people in the back. Stop allowing the enemy to disrupt your flow. Now, let me just say it a third time. Stop allowing the enemy to disrupt your flow. Don't let frustration take you off track. Refuse to let disappointment set you back, says the spirit of the living God. When fear, beco- when fear comes knocking at your door as you transition, don't answer it. Too many times you are allowing the wicked one to access your life, and the end result is delay or derailment. You have authority to shut him out of your mind, your mouth, your finances, your relationships, and anything else I've given you to steward. Shut him out, says the Spirit of God. Oh, come on, come on, come on. That's a good word. I don't care where you're from. Shut him out. Out. Amen. That will preach. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, Luke 10, verse 19, and Luke 9, verses 1 and 2 are the scripture references for today. Now, the prayer starter and the decree. Father, forgive me for allowing the devil any place in my mind. I rebuke the spirit of fear that has been hanging out in the atmosphere over my life in Jesus' name. I decree the enemy is forbidden from entering my territory. I declare his access is shut off, shut down, and shut out, and his huffing and puffing won't blow my house down in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Father, we thank you this morning because you are good. You're not a frustrated God. You're not an anxious God. You're not a God who is in turmoil. You're not confused. You are not sitting on the throne biting your nails at such a time as this. But you are a confident God. You're a God full of grace and mercy and wisdom. We thank you, Lord, this morning for who you are. You are not frustrated. Therefore, we don't have to be frustrated. You are not... uh, out of sorts. Therefore, we don't have to be out of sorts. You are not confused. Therefore, we don't have to be confused. Oh God, you've called us to walk like Jesus walked in the earth. You've called us to walk the way your son walked in the earth. Therefore, we will be confident in our God. We will trust him with everything in us. We will lean into him just a little harder. We will stand knowing that our redemption draws nigh. We will lift up our heads. We will allow the King of glory to have access to our souls and we will shut the devil out in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to allow things that you've not allowed. For whatever we bind on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth must be whatever is already loosed in heaven. Therefore, if it's not allowed in heaven, it's not allowed in our life. Ah. We thank you, Lord. We repent for allowing things in our life that are not allowed in heaven. We repent. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us for allowing things in our life that are not allowed in heaven. They are not part of your will for our life. We ask you, Lord, to help us to change the way we think, to help us to change our minds about what we allow in (laughs) and what we speak out. What we allow in informs what we speak out, what we allow in our heart, 
informs what we speak out out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks oh god we don't want to speak out of an abundance of fear we don't want to speak out of an abundance of anxiety we don't want to speak out of an abundance of disbelief we want to speak out of an abundance of love out of an abundance of faith out of an abundance of joy out of an abundance of peace oh god would you help us lord to stop allowing the devil access to the things you've given us to steward to the people that you've given us to steward to the finances that you've given us to steward oh God help us Lord today to shut him out to shut him out to shut him out and shut him up in Jesus name we give you praise we honor and adore you we magnify you today for there is no other God like you no other God mighty to save no other God who gives us the heads up over and over and over again in scripture you warn us you show us how the enemy moves you teach us your ways you show us your paths you have made it possible for us to walk in victory every moment of every day of our lives and we say yes to your plan oh God we say yes to your way for your ways are higher than our ways your thoughts higher than our thoughts so help us Lord to ascend to the holy mountain who shall ascend those with clean hands and a pure heart help us to ascend to that mountain and sit in your presence and listen to your thoughts abide in your presence Oh Jesus Oh Jesus Oh Jesus Oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus we don't want to be a people who live below our standards <laughs> you died that we could have a life of abundance till it overflows the enemy came to steal kill and destroy you came to give us life in abundance to the full till it overflows life in abundance to the full until it overflows God we want to move walk live have our being in you you're a God of the overflow we don't want to allow the enemy to stop up our wells ah, the Philistines stopped up the wells of Jacob of, of, of Isaac rather the Philistines stopped up his wells and he had to go dig another well and as soon as he got the water flowing there the Philistines stopped up that well too and then he went over and dug another well somewhere else and the Philistines went and stopped up that well too oh I just see that Lord oh the Lord would say to you stop walking around with your head hung down because of the frustration that you feel in your heart over the enemy that has stopped up your wells and the Lord says some of you have been digging 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 and you don't see the results that you hoped for you've been laboring you've been working you've been pressing you've been doing everything you know to do and you don't see the results because the Philistines have come to stop up your well the enemy has come to disrupt your plans and your purposes but the enemy cannot come to disrupt my plans and my purposes for I I shall make a stand for you says the Lord my purposes will stand for you says the Lord you might be delayed and you might have to learn a thing or two about the ways of the wicked one says God and you might have to learn a thing or two about my ways, says God but I will ultimately see my plan for your life prevail if I have your yes and your amen for you have my yes and my amen says the Lord all of my promises to you they are yes and they are amen says the Lord so if I can get your yes if I can get your amen if I can get your agreement says the Lord we can walk together down the path of victory into your destiny says the Lord so don't allow yourself to be so frustrated because the enemy keeps stopping up your well because the enemy keeps giving you uh, the sidetrack treatment and going this way and that way you don't seem like you can get back on track but the Lord says if you're on my track that's the only track you have to worry about and maybe you're walking a little slower than you'd like says the Lord maybe it's not going as quickly as you'd hope says the Lord maybe you don't like the pause and maybe you don't like the reset says the Lord but just rest in me says God rest in my presence and in my goodness and in my glory says the Lord do not allow yourself to be moved off the promise do not allow yourself to be moved from the place in which you stand just hold your ground says God even if you can't move forward in these circumstances and situations says the Lord just stand your ground because I am standing with you and I am standing for you and I will not allow you to be shaken or 
greater move beyond my capacity to restore you and bring the recompense for the out for, for the downfall and the overcoming oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus I just see that so clearly overcoming the overcomers the overcomers the overcomers the overcomers the overcomers do you know that if you read the book of Revelation that there is certain rewards for overcomers <laughs> did you have you ever read the book of Revelation the Bible says there's a blessing to those who read it and keep its words do you notice that in the seven letters to the churches that in different places there are actually promises to the overcomers for example those who overcome Jezebel will have authority in the nations so if you're always under attack with Jezebel then you might take a hint that God is trying to give you authority in nations but you're gonna to have to learn how to fight this principality first but there's promises for the overcomers so it's time to set our hearts to overcome it's time to set our hearts to overcome not to be moved from the place in which we stand but to allow God to stand with us and for us. so as we stand with and for his truth and his gospel there is a reward for those who overcome so father help us Lord strengthen us so we can overcome whatever's trying to overcome us strengthen us so we can overcome the fear that's been unleashed in the earth strengthen us by your spirit God so we can overcome the anxiety and the turmoil and the chaos and the haters God strengthen us so we can overcome we want to do your will oh God but we need your grace we need your strength our strength is not sufficient but your strength in us is more than enough our strength in itself is not sufficient there's no good thing in our flesh our willpower will only carry us so far it's merely the right to choose we need your strength oh God <laughs> We need your strength infuse us with your strength Jesus infuse us with your strength God so we can stand firm in the evil day so that we can redeem the time so that we can take advantage and make the most of the place in which we find ourselves in responding Christ like responding like Jesus would when he walked the earth responding not reacting responding not reacting responding not reacting no knee-jerk reactions God help us help us help us help us help us to avoid the knee-jerk reactions that cause us to kick the wrong people ah. help us Lord to avoid the knee-jerk reactions that help us to kick the wrong people we're kicking people who are trying to help us instead of kicking the devil in the teeth the enemy orchestrates circumstances and situations and we just react 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 ah, fire fire yes yeah, fire it's the fire of hell stop reacting to it stop kicking the people around you kick the devil in the teeth you know how you kick the devil in the teeth you walk in peace you walk in joy you walk in love you walk in hope you walk in faith you just keep walking and if you can't walk you just stand big smile on your face knowing that God is still on the throne Kimbra ishte katara basha. Come on, just walk with a big old smile, peaceful as you can be, just happy, enjoying the journey, looking at the scenery, knowing that God is still on the throne. Oh, just having a good time, sipping your tea, just chilling, just knowing that God is gonna make something good out of all this mess, just trusting in Him completely. Many people right now they're posting all these memes on the internet, how much they trust God and they're memes you know the little cartoons and the the big bold words and those sorts of things they say they're trusting God one moment but the next moment they're clearly having a panic attack all over Facebook and spilling out all their personal stuff God I ask you Lord to remove the spirit of double-mindedness from the body of Christ in this season <laughs> we can't cast it out in Jesus name God if there be any double-mindedness in us help us identify it because we don't receive anything from you with a double mind help us Lord to stop wavering between two opinions wavering between the opinion of the enemy and the opinion of God wavering between the opinion of Fox News and the opinion of CBN wavering between the opinion of this prophet over here and this prophet over there help us Lord to choose what we believe and to choose rightly come on help us Lord to choose what we believe and to choose rightly to stop following 30 and 40 different teachers on the internet who disagree with each other <laughs> come on 
Can I just give you a friendly motherly warning? Some of you need to not watch 40 or 50 different preachers on the internet. Stick with two or three voices you can trust. Some of you, I see it. I see where the double mindedness is coming from. And it seems like a good thing. I can see it. Listen, we have so much more time right now to watch all this stuff on Facebook. And that's a good thing, except when you're watching too many people and they're not even in agreement with each other. And this one's preaching this and this one's preaching that. And they're diabolically and diametrically opposed to one another. Now you're confused because you don't know who to believe. Decide what you believe and watch those voices that confirm and even challenge you to go deeper in those beliefs. But be very careful. Be very careful because all these different voices will lead you into confusion. You don't want you believe anymore. You don't believe if Jesus is coming back sooner if he's never coming back at all. You don't believe if you're pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. You know what? Now's not the time to, you know, listen to all these different voices. Now's the time to bolster your faith. You can listen to the debates later. Now is not the time to be stretched thin, which way that way, this way, over here. I don't know if I believe in the healing power of God. This preacher believes there's no apostles. This preacher believes they're all over the place. What do I believe? Now is the time to bolster your faith. Go study some classics like Kenneth E. Hagen. Seriously, go get on the internet and study some of the classics that I studied for so long. Study the, old, the teachings of the generals of days gone by, Lester Summerall and Derek Prince and, you know, the modern day ones that are alive like Bishop Hammond and Bill Johnson and, you know, study them. Study their teachings. Stop listening to every person who's all of a sudden become a Facebook preacher. They don't even have sound theology and you're letting it in your ear gates and your eye gates. Help us, Lord, to eat the hay and spit out the sticks. But Lord, help us to stop tuning in to broadcasts that are full of sticks. So many sticks that it chokes, chokes us, chokes us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I want to pray through something and I want to bring just a wee bit of truth to, to the, to the fore. And if, if this pricks our hearts and brings a little bit of conviction, that's okay because it's for training in righteousness, not, not to condemnation. But I want to point something out and I want to pray through it so that we can avoid this snare because the enemy has laid us a massive snare in the body of Christ right now, a massive snare. And there's so many, well, there's at least two prophets I know that are saying this is all going to bring unity. This whole COVID thing is going to bring unity. This whole COVID thing is going to bring unity to the body of Christ. It may bring unity to the true body of Christ, but right now it appears that it's bringing division. I'm seeing people absolutely condemn people who close their doors to their church. Pastors absolutely condemn, saying they're faithless. Are they even saved? What are they thinking? How dare them close the doors? By the same token, I'm seeing uh, people condemn those who are having church. They're irresponsible. If anybody dies, if their blood is on their hands. I mean, these are the comments that I'm seeing on Facebook. To each his own, beloved. To each his own. Anything, you know, if we do something out of fear, it's sin. Because the Bible says, whatever, not a faith is sin. I stand by that. But if we do something just to prove a point to the government, out of rebellion, just with a haughty, rebellious attitude, well, I'm not going to shut my church and you can't make me, then that's not right either. That's also sin. Because the motive of the heart is what God is looking at. If you want to close the doors of your church because... Or you don't want to go to church because you think that's wisdom in your situation. God bless you. If you want to leave the doors open to your church because you think that's the wisdom of God for your congregation. God bless you. But when I see leaders, 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 leaders in the body of Christ absolutely condemning. Not sharing an opinion. I'm not talking about sharing an opinion about what we should do. But I mean condemning and stirring the saints to enter into this spirit of condemnation. Because the, the church is closed or because the church is open. Beloved, this is grieving the spirit of God to each his own. Since when did you become the judge? The Bible says, you know, let God judge him. You're not the judge. You're not the judge. You're not the judge. Let God judge them. If you think they're making a mistake, pray that they'll step in line with whatever God's perfect will is. Don't go on Facebook and invite the saints to a condemnation party. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers for they are called the children of God. The New Living Translation says God blesses those who work for peace. The Contemporary English Version says God blesses those people who make peace. And the Good News Translation says happy are those who work for peace. So then if you flip that around, cursed are the instigators. 
God curses those who work to instigate. Now, I don't want to go that far and say that there's curses on these people, but God is certainly grieved when the body of Christ is tearing. And the Bible says, be careful that you do not bite and devour each other. And I'm, I'm, I'm just tired of it. When all this first came out, I said, I don't agree with people who are closing their doors because they're afraid. And this is before any government mandate. And I still don't agree. And by the way, it's a suggestion, not a law. Right. So who are you to who, to, who are you to judge? There's a church in California that the authorities busted in the middle of service with guns and shut the church down. Crazy times we're living in. If we can't unify as a body right now, the devil's going to get a stronghold. Jesus said in Romans 12, 18, bless uh, if possible. So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. I understand there's all these conspiracy theories out there about vaccines and, you know, Mark of the Beast and all this stuff. And last night at dinner, we were having a discussion. If the government mandated Mark of the Beast, would you take it? Like, how far do we go? How far does this take us? We have to learn how to live in peace with each other and respect each other. We're going to need each other. Stop biting and devouring each other. First Thessalonians 5.13, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work, speaking of leaders. And it says, be at peace among yourselves. Romans 14, 19. So then let us pursue and what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. <laughs> so then let us pursue what? Arguments, petty discussions, posts that cause people to attack other people. No, let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. You know, Steve Hill, Leonard Ravenhill, David Wilkerson, these men stirred the pot, but they didn't target specific people or specific choices in Christ. They called out principles and kept it scriptural. What I'm seeing out there is grievous and I'm going to absolutely block and unfriend everybody that does that because I can't, I can't have that infecting my heart right now. It's one thing to challenge the body. It's one thing to, to pr propose a, a specific, you know, Hey, what, is, what do you think? What do you think the Bible says about this verse? Or what, what do you think is God is saying in this? It's another thing to, to launch an all out attack against another minister or other ministries that don't believe the same as you about things that are a matter of conscience. Hebrews 12, 14, strive for peace with everyone and for holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Uh Oh, Strive for peace with everyone, even if you don't believe that they did the right thing in the middle of COVID. Even if you believe they made the wrong decision, strive with peace. Don't blast them on Facebook. James 3.18, and the harvest of righteousness is, show, is sown in peace by those who make peace. Psalm 34.14, turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So, Father, we ask you to forgive us if we've been in the middle of a controversy saying amen on someone's Facebook post to something that was condemning other ministries, whether they were named or not. We ask you, Lord, to convict our hearts of how you would have us respond in a time like this. And to the leaders in the body of Christ, I bless you, whether you're opening your doors or whether you're closing your doors. And to the leaders in the body of Christ, I bless you. Even if you made your decision out of fear, I bless you. I don't have to agree with you. But I bless you. Those uh, pastors and leaders who are just trying to prove a point to the government and they're operating in rebellion, I bless you. I might not agree with your spirit in the decision, but I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I'm not going to curse you. Those who believe the vaccines are of the devil and the mark of the beast is coming and you're, you know, embroiled in these cars, I bless you. I don't have to agree to bless you. Those of you who, who believe in pre-trib, I bless you. Mid-trib, I bless you. Post-trib, I bless you. No-trib, I bless you. Jesus came back in 59 AD, I bless you. I don't have to agree with you to walk in peace with you. If it's not, listen to me, if it's not a matter of salvation, if it's not a doctrine of salvation, if it is not against salvation right now, we don't need to be arguing. There's open-handed differences and closed-handed differences. We don't need to argue about certain things. If we, if we all believe in Jesus Christ, he's the only way to the Father. He died, rose again, and is sitting at the right hand of the Father, even now making intercession for us, and he's going to come back one day again to get us. That is the core of our salvation. All these other things are petty in a time like this, and it's breeding strife, and it's breeding division. Don't let that in your mind. It brings double-mindedness. So, Father, we repent if we have engaged in petty division arguments in the middle of a crisis. 
instead of seeking to sow seeds of peace. Help us, Lord, to, 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 to engage. Right now, I just pray for the body of Christ. Come on, somebody pray with me. Because I'm, I'm grieved by what I'm seeing. We're not to curse each other. We're not to curse each other. We can disagree politely. We don't have to curse each other. We don't have to curse each other. We don't have to bite and devour each other. So, Father, I'm asking you to pour out a spirit of unity on the church. I'm asking you, Lord, to pour out your spirit. Pour out a spirit of unity on the church. And help us, Lord, to walk in peace with one another, even if we don't agree. Help us to agree to disagree without issuing and spewing condemnation on your servants. We are your servants, and you are our judge. Help us to be led forth by your spirit and by peace. See, the Bible says to be led forth by spirit and by peace, by his his spirit and by peace. But you can't do that if you're all full of strife. You don't have peace. Help us, Lord, to see what we need to see and to say what we need to say and not to say what we don't need to say. And to go into healing mode and reconciliation mode. Come on, you want to keep your authority in the spirit? You want to keep your authority in the spirit? You want to keep your authority in the spirit? Stop attacking other Christians. Stop biting and devouring one another. Father, help us, Lord. What I know is that all this strife in the body of Christ grieves God. We're supposed to be the example in the earth right now. And we're on Facebook arguing over who has church and who doesn't. And Mark of the Beast and all these things. These are healthy discussions if they're in the right spirit. If they're in the right spirit, but once condemnation and judgment comes, then you're off. So help us, Lord, to stand strong and be examples of your love and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. I've tried to keep it during this time of crisis. I've tried to keep these broadcasts so light and hopeful. But what I saw yesterday, and particularly last night, just really, 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 really grieved me. And you know where, where it, there was a, a leader just condemning churches that were opening with a how dare you. Basically, I think he said, how dare you? Who do you think you are? And you know what that came out of, beloved? It came out of fear. It was an emotional response. Because God, the Bible says that God's not condemning us. So if he's not condemning us, why should we condemn each other? If he's not condemning us, who are we to condemn each other? <laughs> If he's not condemning us, and he's not, then who are we to condemn each other? So when you see people doing those things, just pray for them that they would have the peace of God. Don't clap back. Don't write something nasty on their timeline. Don't get into the debate. This is not a time to debate these kinds of issues. This is a time to pray and stand in faith and be a light. That's it. Hallelujah. God is good. If you need prayer... You can leave a prayer request at global at uh, awakeninghouseofprayer dot com slash global prayer room. Uh, no, two four seven prayer room. Awakeninghouseofprayer dot com slash two four seven prayer room. There are people there praying all the time. Just four hours ago, yesterday, several people through two days ago, two days ago, people are praying there every day. We built this resource a long time ago for times like this where you can engage with other people and they can pray with you as well. Of course, we pray for you. If you need prayer, awakeninghouseofprayer.com slash 247 prayer room. Amen. If you're afraid, if you need just to have others crying out for you, you can do that. Listen, if you want to donate into this ministry to help us to forward some of these initiatives, you can do that at jenniferleclair.org slash donate, jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You can become a partner there. You can sow a one-time seed there, jenniferleclair.org slash donate. We're not having a phone call tonight for prodigals, but we are having an event at Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida, setting the prodigals free. You know, the prodigal came home during a time of crisis. During a time of crisis, the prodigal came home during a time of crisis, during a time of famine. So I'm going to be teaching you strategies to pray for the prodigals tonight. If you can't make it to South Florida, you go to ahop.tv, A-H-O-P dot TV. A-H-O-P dot TV and watch it there. If you're in South Florida, just come on out. You can register to come to South Florida at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. And guys, please read. It's like over and over and over again, I'm hearing that you guys are, are, are cussing us out and making accusations because you signed up on Eventbrite. You can't watch it online from there. Well, dear ones, there's no way to watch it online from there. If you read the description it says, this is, for, uh, this is for in-person registration only. If you are not in South Florida, please visit AHOP TV 
to watch online. And then you're cussing us out. Guys, stop, please. <laughs> please stop cussing us out because you didn't read. It never said that. Oh, yeah, it did, beloved, it did. We love you. We know you're upset, although people do this stuff all year long. Read, 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 read. Read the three lines of the description. Read it. Oklahoma City, San Antonio, we're having to reschedule that tour. We're waiting on the new dates. We're going to put some mock dates in the Eventbrite just so it doesn't shut down the event. And we will give you those new dates. Don't freak out. If you wanted to come, hold on to your ticket. We're going to have it. Same with Jacksonville and Atlanta, Nashville. These things just all threw us for a loop. But we're just going to postpone everything. We, I had lightened my schedule to the point of almost nothing. And I didn't know why. I just didn't feel to do anything. Prophet Nessa will tell you, I didn't feel to schedule anything else. I had some soft dates written on my calendar, but I never publicized anything. And this is why, because we're having to rearrange everything. I want to remind you of the Ignite Prophetic E-Summit. This is an E-Summit. Registration is free. JenniferLeClaire.Eventbrite.com. You'll be sent a login on how to watch that closer to the date, but this is the best way we could figure out to get so many of you aware of what's going on. I'll be teaching on the prophetic, sponsored by the Ignite Network. Launch a prophecy room ministry. You want to learn how to launch a prophecy rooms ministry in your city? There's an interest call for that coming up soon. God is good. There's so much, guys. Go to go to uh, jenniferleclair.org and get on the email list. jenniferleclair.org and get on the email list. Or text the word prophet to 555-888. If you want a Sylvia Cash App, you can do that at dollar sign Jennifer Leclaire, capital J, capital L, capital C. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. You can sell via PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. Use the text to give, 754-701-2161. Text the word pray, 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. You can use the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Well, praise the Lord. Pray for me, guys. Get on that mailing list, jenniferleclair.org. I'll see you hopefully later today with a Facebook Live. We'll see what the Lord wants to do, and I will follow his lead. Amen. God bless you.